for those of you, I did promise a little snippet. So, without further ado, here you go. What's up, y'all? So, I want to do something really quick. Um, I want to, this video is like four minutes. Um, <clears throat> I'm trying to get dressed so I can get out of here. But, I want to show y'all something. So, I got a chance, I was listening to Earl Carter, right? I was listening to John Hanna. And honestly, I had I had to ask myself the question. I said, and this is a dumb question, but it's a good question. I said, what was the difference between John Hanna's message and Earl Carter's message? So, and this this ain't no beat up. This ain't no beat up. Okay, daddy gonna leave you outside for a little bit. Um. What was the difference between John Hanna's message and Earl Carter's message from 2000? Who did this? One second, y'all. So I want to I want to point out something. And that is, hold on, y'all. That wasn't you. Earl Carter's message in 2014 was simply, to me, revolting, okay? Hey, Tia, it was simply revolting. Come here, in here. Simply revolting, because it, it just went too far. John Hanna's message was the same message, but it was not vulgar, if that makes sense. It was not, it was not that. John Hanna came from a place of real sincerity, right? Real sincerity. But if you look at their faces, if you look at their faces, it says everything. These men, these men are uncomfortable. They're uncomfortable because anytime you challenge, anytime you challenge a leader, especially before, especially before a crowd of people, they're uncomfortable. The reason why the leaders, the reason why the leaders were getting with Earl Carter was because they liked that type of mess. Thank you, Ms. Cassandra. They liked that type of mess, right? I want to show y'all something. <laughs> I've watched this video quite a few times. And today was a day where I just really thought, I thought about, I'm cleaning my floors. I thought about that. I thought about that. I'm, I'm going to show y'all something. Earl Carter, as, as crazy as people may call him, Earl Carter said the same thing. Earl Carter said the same thing. The same exact thing. John Hanna had compassion. Now, y'all call John Hanna, whatever y'all want to call John Hanna. Okay? Call John Hanna, whatever y'all want to call him. But John Hanna came with some compassion. And it wasn't about let's bash, let's bash, but let's make the church better. Y'all talking about let's make America great again, let's make the church better. I want y'all to see something. And James, I'm using your, your video. I need you to hear me, Church of God. The thing that scared me was that they Look at their faces. Because, because we turn prayer, prayer over, over to women. women. Because, because we heard, heard this a call for the women. women. But when, but when you, you send a boy, look at Bishop Porter's face. Women, and, and he wants her mantle, he also, he also gets, gets her mannerisms. Look at his face. Look at their faces. Because there wasn't a man to release the mantle. 
Watch. So you watch. Him him you called, called him out of his name. name. But the, the only, only thing, thing he wanted was the oil. oil. No, 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 no. Don't know what to say. Sing in the choir because I wanted to get close to you. Slow. I didn't want your chain. I didn't want your power. I didn't want your suit. Watch this. I want your oil. Watch. I want your endurance. I want to be next to you so I can know what it is to hold on. I want to be next to you so that I can feel the anointing. Because if I get close to you. Watch, watch. I watch you years. Come to St. James Church of Christ. I remember your mother having a holler that would destroy you. And, and I, I asked God, God to let the same oil, oil that was on your oil get, get on me. I want, I want some, some of the Heinz oil. oil. Watch. Watch now. Watch now. <laughs> Watch Bishop Porter. I wanted your oil. Because you lived here in the Holy City. Look, 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 look. He, it, he's very uncomfortable. You can lay hands on my belly just like you do it. I remember before you were the presiding bishop and J O N G and O N but I watched you. I monitored you because I saw that you had an anointing for business. You had an anointing for structure. You was Pentecost with class. Keep watching. Keep watching. I don't want your seats. They don't want your collar. They don't want your position. They want your oil. They want to know how to fight when the devil is in their house. They want to know how to lay on the altar. Come on, let me go through here. They want to know how to get to the system mothers that know how to moan in the spirit. They want to know how to walk past you and still know that you got oil. You might be oil, but you're older, but your oil is rich. I need you to make sure you stand next to an anointed person. Do me a favor. Reach up and grab it. Everybody has to squeeze it and say, I need the oil. 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 Squeeze that hand. Squeeze that hand. Squeeze that hand. I need the oil. I need the oil. I need the oil. I need the oil. You came in here on empty, but God is about to reveal your oil. All right, so listen. So I'm sitting here. Okay. I'm sitting here watching this. And everybody on the pulpit is uncomfortable. Every, and I just said that this morning about all of this. Everybody on the pulpit is uncomfortable. All the men are uncomfortable. You know why? Because nobody checks me. I'm the bishop. You don't tell me what to do. I'm the bishop. And if I do wrong, it's not your place to put me in check. So... We have a church that feels that they're uncheckable. And now everything is, now we're dealing with a different generation of people. Now we're dealing with a different generation of people that are renegades. We're dealing with a different generation of people that by any means necessary, no one tarries, no one, no one seeks the Lord. They just speak in their heavenly language. You can't speak in your heavenly language when you have not waited for it. At least that's what I was taught. Now, it may be something different. I don't know. 
And again, he said the very same sentiments that I said this morning. Here it is, the women. Been in the prayer room, seeking the face of God, all this other stuff like that. And the young men wanted the anointing that the women had, not the men. Because the men was too busy doing other stuff. And as you looked at all of their faces, they was like, Bishop Porter was like, I ain't got nothing negative to say about Bishop. Not today. Behave. But Bishop Porter was a man after position. And he's, y'all really don't have nothing against Bishop Porter. I don't. You know what I'm saying? Bishop Porter is a person he don't like nobody to leave his church. You know, so. But honestly, Honestly, we got the gift of tongues or we know how to speak in somebody's tongues. We know how to humble out of the old Shanda. We know how to lay hands, we know how to speak in tongues. We know how to do all those things. And yet and still, nobody's healed, nobody's delivered, and nobody's set free. The church is still broke, busted, and disgusted. Right? Right. We're so busy. We're so busy looking the part, right? We're so busy looking the part that we don't live the part. And then the young men, again, let me go back to what I first said in the beginning. Shalisa, let me go back to what I said in the beginning. What was the difference between Earl Carter's message and John Hanna's message? No, no, we're going to stop with this mental health in the church. We're going to take some accountability for some of it. For it's a lot of this mess. What was the difference? What was the difference between Earl Carter's message and John Hanna's message? Now, I ain't crazy. I'm, I'm just asking a question. I know I got some smart people on the line. What was the difference between John Hanna's message and Earl Carter's message. They basically said the same thing. They basically said the same thing, except Earl Carter went too far. Nothing no different from what he always says, right? Because Earl Carter was my pastor years ago. Nothing no different from what he always said. And see, the thing about Earl, the thing about Earl is even after I talked to him, Earl said, he said, Mario, he said, I talked to Bishop Blake and I said, I would even apologize if I did too much. If I offended anybody, I would apologize. He said, I, he said, I realized I, I went too far. He said, I realized I went too far. He said, I would apologize, but they didn't let him do that. They didn't let him do that. Earl Carter said, now, he said, I know. He said, but this is how the church acts. This, this is how Earl said, this is how the church has been acting for years. And he, Earl Carter's not lying. We lay in hands. Ain't nobody being delivered. We, we lay hands, ain't nobody being delivered. Y'all worried about casting out a demon and we walking around here demons. We, we walk in demons. We walk in, we walk in demonic spirits. That's what we are. We're walking evil demonic spirits. We walk in evil demonic spirits that's trying to deliver somebody else. And you know what the devil is saying? Paul, I know. John, I know. Who are you? Who are you? Oh, yeah. You my third cousin. What's up, cousin? What's up, cousin? How you operating? You living good? You, you operating that house well? Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. 
My sister Chanel would tell me all the time, Mario, don't, uh, we, you need to stop all this stuff. Because what if you want to come back? I, I ain't never went nowhere. I ain't never went nowhere. I'm still saved. I'm still sanctified. I got the Holy Ghost. I just will cuss you out in a minute. You know what I'm saying? I shouldn't do that, but you know what I'm saying? I still got them. But my heart is vexed. Because what kept me so long ago is not here no more. It ain't here no more, Mama Kim. It ain't here no more. It ain't here no more. Where the church mama's at? What you, 34, 35, you a church mama now? You ain't been through nothing. All y'all, y'all women want to be church mamas. Baby, baby, I remember church mama had them swole ankles and be just sashaying around the can. Come on, baby, come on up here and sit beside me. Like, we ain't got them no more. Baby, what you, you know, you got, what you got, some red bottoms on? Some stilettos and carrying on? Hmm? You around here trying to be cute? Trying to have your decolletage all light and carrying on? That's what Mother Frances Kelly would say. Around here with your decolletage. Everybody want to be hip. Everybody want to be in with the no. Everybody want to be with the new fad or fashion or whatever the case may be. How about this? How about let's just get saved for real? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I ain't worried about your clothes because, you know, baby, you know, you know, when you really got God on you, you know, your dress will come down a little bit. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes we have dresses up below the uh, above the knees. When you get saved, your dress come down a little bit. You know, not slide your dress down, but your, your, your hem come down a little bit. It, it'll come down a little bit because you want you want to stay saved and you want to be sanctified and you don't want your salvation to be messed up because. You got on some little short skirt and some preacher up there and then got rock hard in, in the pulpit and carrying on and trying to talk to you. Anyways, y'all, I'm going to stop crying on here. But that's my testimony. That's my testimony. That's my testimony. And if anybody feels some type of way about this, that's your problem. I'm going to say it like my grandma would always say it and my auntie them as I get ready to take my seat. Right now you find me saved. <laughs> right now you find me saved, sanctified, baptized and filled with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost. And that will fire. My mind is made up to run on to see what the Lord is going to do for me. My mind is made up to run on. And see what the end's gonna be. Let me tell y'all something. You ain't got to ever, ever, ever worry about getting nobody back for some shit they done did to you. Because quiet as it's kept, everybody working get paid. Let me break that down so you understand what I mean. Everybody working getting paid. See, some of you motherfuckers don't even know that you're working. But payday comes out the wild, bitch. You're being messy. You're working. You're gossiping about people. You're working. You stealing, lying, cheating, or just all around doing some fuck shit. You're working. And payday is on its motherfucking way. Ha <laughs> ha. Let me tell you something, you working motherfuckers. Some of you bitches got overtime in that bitch too. Ooh, that payout gonna be good. So when you get your check, bitch, don't complain. You worked for it. Ha 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 ha. That's why you better put that good work in so you can get a good check. Because everybody working, getting paid.